Meta's MRUK package got an update. Along with a bunch of improvements, they've added three new features. First is a destructible mesh. You can use this feature to break your rooms, walls, floors, and ceilings to reveal a virtual environment. Something similar to the one that we saw in first encounter. In today's video, we'll see how this can be done. Next, we have keyboard tracking. For me, this is more like a teaser of what can be done when Meta gives us access to the camera feed. It's basically object tracking. It can track a keyboard in your environment and create a pass-through box around it. And the final feature is environment object placement. Earlier, you had to map your room, shoot a raycast to see which object it's hitting and then place an object on it. Now, it can use the depth camera to detect how far a surface is and place the object accordingly without the need of mapping our room. I'll be covering these features maybe in a later video. But for now, let's see how to break some walls and reveal a cool environment. Now there are a couple of things you'll need before we get started. First, you need to create a Unity project and add the latest version of MetaMR Utility Kit. You can get this package easily by going into Unity's Asset Store, search for MetaMR Utility Kit, add it to your asset and import it inside Unity. Now when this package gets imported, it automatically adds some of the dependent packages as well. Then navigate inside MetaXR tools, select Project Setup tool and here make sure to apply all the recommended settings and also fix the issues. Now to make your life easier, you can download this base project which has been set up with everything from the GitHub link provided in the description below. Now once you have your project ready, we can start to set up our scene. So select the main camera and delete it. Then navigate inside Meta, Tools, Building Blocks. From this window, add the camera rig, the pass-through layer, controller tracking, scroll down and add the effect mesh. Now doing this would have added a camera rig to our scene which allows us to track our headset and controllers, a pass-through layer that allows us to see our physical environment, the mixed reality utility kit with the MRUK script which is responsible for getting the scene models from our headset and an effect mesh which creates a special mesh out of the room objects that are present. Right now we don't need it so let's go ahead and disable it. Next, in the project window search for destructible mesh. Make sure the search is selected to all. Select the prefab and add it to your scene. Now this prefab comes along with the destructible global mesh spawner. Now as the name suggests, it is designed to facilitate the spawning and the management of destructible global mesh with a random segmentation. Now this component allows for customization as well. Now it allows us to add a material of how the destructible mesh should look like. It allows us to adjust the segment density. So higher the values, better will be the quality, but it might decrease your performance. Now this also has an option to reserve spaces, which defines the area within the mesh that remain non-destructible. Now this can be better understood when you see it for yourself. So make sure to connect your headset using link or air link and press the play button. And now you should be able to see the global mesh of your room. So if you navigate inside the rooms, global mesh, destructible global mesh, here you can see the different segments of your mesh. I know this is not so good to look at. So let's see how we can fix this. Inside your asset folder, create a new script called as destructible mesh behavior. Now you can get this script from the description below, but what we are doing here is we are first referencing the destructible global mesh spawner and listening to its event when the segmentation is completed. And when the event gets invoked, we are adding a barycentric coordinates to those segments. Now, if you want to know how barycentric coordinate works, I will leave a link for that. But what you need to know is that they are particularly important in computer graphics. These coordinates can be used to identify triangle vertices which is useful for effects like coloring, tearing apart triangles or even applying physics to the parts of a mesh. Also, it can be used for precise calculations as it's easier to calculate things like collusion, textures or movement of these mesh. Alright then, going back to Unity, we can add this script to the destructible mesh prefab and reference the spawner over here. And now when you save your scene and press play, you'll be able to visualize the destructible mesh much better. Now while we are in the play mode, if you navigate inside room, global mesh, destructible global mesh and scroll down, you'll be able to find the reserved mesh segment. And as you can see here, some of the top region and the bottom region is reserved and it cannot be destroyed. Now the best part here is you can select the destructible mesh and adjust these parameters. For example, I can increase the point per unit in X and Y direction, increase the max point count, set the reserve top to minus one, which means that I don't want any reserve spaces at the top and reserve the bottom by 0.2. And now you can click on clear spawn mesh and spawn the destructible global mesh once again. And this time when you navigate inside the destructible global mesh and select the reserve mesh segment, you'll see that it has a larger area at the bottom and there's nothing at the top. Next, 
import an environment of your choice or you can use the same one as mine now this environment is the same one that meta used in their world beyond experience which i got from their git repository now at this stage if you press play and test your scene you'll be able to see this virtual world the destructible mesh and you'll also be able to see your physical world but very faintly so now in order to see our pass through environment fully we need to replace the material of the destructible mesh for that navigate inside asset right click create a new material call it as selective pass through from the shader drop down navigate inside oculus and select selective pass through here set the blend color as subtract change the render cube from shader to transparent and increase its value by 2 then select the destructible mesh and add this material inside this parameter and now when you save your scene and press play and you'll be able to see your physical world i know here it looks black but trust me i'm able to see my room all right so all that's left is to destroy the mesh and reveal the virtual environment and the easiest way to do it is to shoot a raycast from the controller when the trigger is pressed and destroy the segment that was hit by the ray and we can write the code for that inside destructible mesh behavior script itself here First, we want to declare variables to store the destructible mesh component, a variable to store the list of mesh segments, and a variable to reference the OVR camera rig. Then, in the awake method, we can find the OVR camera rig and reference it to the variable. Now, since we are using raycasting, we need to add a mesh collider for each of the mesh segment. And for that, inside the onEnable method, we want to listen to the event when the destructible mesh is created. And so, when the destructible mesh is created, we want to reference it to the variable, get all the mesh segments, and for each of the mesh segment, we want to add a mesh collider. Now, since we are good developers, let's remove the listener when the object is disabled. And now inside the update method, we can check if the primary index trigger or the secondary index trigger buttons are pressed. If it is, then we can try to get the mesh and destroy it. So here first, we need to get a ray. Now based on whether you're using the right controller or left controller, it's going to choose the ray origin and direction. And we are going to use physics.raycast to shoot the ray. Now when the ray hits something, it's going to store its information inside the hit variable. And from this variable, we can see whether it has a collider. And if it has, then we want to see which game object it is hitting. Then we check if this object is present inside the global mesh segment. And if it is not a reserved segment, only then we want to destroy the mesh using the destroy segment function. Now this is preferred over destroying the whole game object itself because it takes care of destroying the assets initiated. All right, so now that you know how the script works, let's go back into Unity. And now when you test the scene, you can point your controller towards the wall and press the trigger button and it should destroy the mesh to reveal the virtual environment. Now, if you have a look at Meta's blog on how they developed first encounter, you'll see them mentioning that they have used visuals of broken pieces of walls and ceilings with a generic texture and they would hide it with a combination of various particle effects and keep those pieces short-lived. And so back in Unity, I found that the environment package had a set of small rocks. I used a number of these rocks, changed its size, repositioned them and rotated them and created this debris prefab. Now you can get this debris prefab by navigating inside asset, environment package, prefabs. And when you add it to your scene, you can see that it has a number of small rocks with different sizes and orientation. Next, we need a script that will add forces to all these rocks based on its position from the debris origin. So we create a script called debris with variables to store the explosion force, the lifetime of the debris and the rigid bodies of all the child objects. Then on awake, we reference all the rigid bodies and we have a function called scatter debris. So when this function gets called, it's going to go through each of the child object and apply a force based on its position from the debris origin. And then it's going to destroy the object based on the lifetime set over here. So going back to Unity, you can select the debris game object and add the debris script to it. Then make sure to click on overrides and apply all. Next, for the particle effects, I downloaded the polygonal low poly particle pack from Unity Asset Store. You can find the link below. And I modified this particle as as per my requirements. Now you can find this by navigating inside asset, sub polygonal particles and we have the prefab here. And now for the last part, we can modify the destructible mesh behavior to spawn the debris, scatter them around and play the particle effect. So going inside the script, 
we can add two variables to reference the debris and the particle effect. Then inside the try destroy mesh segment, before destroying the segment, we want to play the visual effects and we want to play it at the hit point. So the play visual effects function instantiates the debris, instantiate the particle effects, adjust its transform to the hit location and it calls the scatter debris function. Now we don't have to worry about playing the particle effects because if we have a look at them, we have already enabled play on awake. All right, so now we can select these two prefabs get rid of them from our scene, select the destructible mesh and reference them here. And that's about it. Now when you save your scene and test it, you'll notice that when you destroy the wall, the debris gets instantiated and the particle effect gets played as well, making it look a bit more realistic. Now if you want to take this a step further by adding collusion and occlusion, then feel free to check out Black Whale's video. And that's it for this video. If you do end up building something cool, make sure to share it with us on LinkedIn or Discord. If you want us to make videos on other features, Features like keyboard tracking and environment placement then let us know in the comments below thank you so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one